I'm going to show you how to fix a shower valve that leaks. First thing you do is shut off the main water supply to your home. Now the gate valve is off. Turned it clockwise to shut it off. I turned my water heater temperature knob setting to pilot. Before I start working on the shower valves, I turn on every faucet in my home and I also open the hose bibs on the exterior of my home to allow all of the water to flow out of the system. You need to remove the trim cap right here at the end of the handle. Just take a small screwdriver, work it under it. Now you want to open the faucet in the full on position. Remove the screw. Before you remove the screws, it's a good idea to put a towel down at the drain area of the bathtub or the shower so that if you drop one, you won't lose it. Sometimes these screws are difficult to remove because of hard water and deposits it's set up. If you have a tough time getting these screws out, you need to soak the screw in some penetrating oil or what I use. I would use silicone lubricant spray. It's just my go-to. I would spray a little bit of silicone lubricant spray in a container, use a Q-tip, and apply it around that screw and let it sit overnight. Sometimes these handles are really difficult to get off because of hard water and deposits that set up over time. So you may not be able to pull the handle off. If you can't get the handles off, hit them with the handle of a screwdriver. So first turn them off. You hit the handle with a screwdriver on all sides to break up that deposit and that hard water to help you get that handle off. Again, that's in the off position. Once you've worked it a little bit with a screwdriver, turn the valve back on in the full on position. Try to remove that handle. If you can't remove the handle, there's a tool that's made for that. It's a faucet handle remover. It's like some jaws that go around it and help you pull it off. They do work, I've used them before, but this one comes right off. Now you remove the trim or escutcheon. This one screws off. Some of these pieces of trim or escutcheons have a set screw at the bottom or the side that you have to remove before you take the trim off. These are your shower valves. What you see right here, this nut is called the packing nut. This is the body of the valve itself. And this is the valve stem. Now we're going to remove the valves. There's a wrench, a socket wrench made for that. It goes right over the valve body. You have to know what size the valve body is to know what size of socket to get. These are sold individually or will come in a set. You can also use an adjustable wrench to loosen the valve. You can use channel locks. Through this socket wrench, you put a screwdriver so you have leverage to turn that socket wrench. Or you can use an adjustable wrench to put around that socket wrench to help you turn it. and the valve is loosened. In my case, water's leaking out, so I take this trusty little funnel I made and let it leak out. This is just the top to a cottage cheese container that I cut the edges off so that I could slide under the manifold in there to allow any water that wants to drip out or go into the wall to drip into this container. This is the washer at the end of my valve stem. That's worn away and that's why I have a leak. What I'm doing is using a dental tool to clean off the residual of the Rectro Seal 5 because when I put the new sealant on, I don't want any old sealant there. And in a minute, I will show you what somebody has done to this manifold so that you understand why I have to use the sealant. In the back there, in the manifold, is a valve seat. That has to be replaced too, and I'll show you how to do that. But I want to show you what happens. 
If you over tighten that valve, tighten it more than it needs to be tightened, you can deform the manifold like mine has been. That's because somebody over tightened the valve. So now, whoever puts that valve on thereafter, like me, has to put some sealant around there so that the valve doesn't leak. So don't over tighten y'all. If your valve is leaking and it's leaking in a bathtub, you're going to have a third valve here. This is the diverter valve. So if you have a middle valve like this, the diverter valve, you replace them the same way you replace these two. Now I'm going to remove the other valve. All right, y'all, that's a valve seat. Here's what happens. As you close your valve, turn off your hot or cold water, and turn it into that valve seat, the washer at the end of this valve compresses up against that valve seat to stop the water from flowing. If these valve seats are pitted and they get worn and pitted over time, the washer can't do its job. The water will just flow right past it and you'll have a leak. If it's a bad valve seat, it can also cause the washer to be eroded away over time. And I think that's what happened to mine. We'll see in a minute because I'm gonna remove these valve seats. This is a valve seat wrench, and that's what you need to get the valve seats out. These valve seat wrenches are stepped down on each side to accommodate the size of the valve seat you have. So you have a total of six sizes that this wrench can accommodate. I'm going to be putting that wrench in the valve seat back there and it'll go in like that. And then I have to loosen it. I'm gonna put the wrench in that valve seat. Make sure it's well seated. And because I'm not as strong as some of y'all are, I'm using a cheater bar to help me get some leverage to turn that valve seat. Came right off, it shouldn't be that loose, y'all. So I'm gonna back that out. And I know it's loose now. I'm gonna tip that wrench up just a bit to bring it out, bring it straight out. This is the valve seat I just took out of my manifold. This is a new valve seat. Look how worn down that is. It needs to be replaced. I can also see and feel that the valve seat is pitted. That's what is chewing away at my washer on the valve stem. Because every time I close that water and turn it off, it's rubbing against and it's destroying the washer. If you're in here changing your valves, I highly encourage you and recommend that you change the valve seats. Hold it firmly in square. That means push it in. Don't let it wobble. And she broke free. This is smoother, but it's rough. So as I close that valve to turn off the water, it's just going to rub up against this valve seat and abrade that washer. Before I put the valve seats back in, I'm going to use some Retro Seal 5 as sealant around the threads. The only reason I do that is that I want it to be easy to remove them next time I take them out. They can be tough to remove with the metal on metal. Now, Retro Seal 5, the solids will go to the bottom of the container. I take a screwdriver and I just mix that sealant up. You see how all the solids are together? You need to break that up. After you mix it, that's what it should look like. Then you can apply your sealant. You put the valve seat back on the wrench. Make sure it fits snugly. That's how much Retro Seal 5 I put on. Carefully place the valve seat back in and turn. Tighten it to the right. Here 
and it's tight. Now that it's tight, make it snug. We're going to put the second valve seat in. Just look on back there, y'all. Center it. And you'll feel it as it starts to screw in. Then it'll come to a stop. I'm going to reposition the wrench because I want a different leverage on that to tighten it. A little bit about these valves. You have to know what type of valve you have to replace it. What I'd recommend you do is turn off your water, remove the valve, and a diverter valve if you have one. Go to a local hardware store or Home Depot, Lowe's, and find out if they have the type that you need. I don't replace valves. I rebuild them, and I'm going to show you how I do that in a bit. But here's the rule of thumb with these valves. If you turn off your shower and the water continues to leak from either the spout in the bathtub or the shower head, you need to replace the washer here. If this valve is leaking from right about here or even down here, when the water is on, so you're taking a shower, you need to replace what's called the stem packing seal or washer. I call it a packing nut seal. I'm removing this part of the valve because I want to replace it. That's what the trim screws onto. The packing nuts I'm taking off my valves have residue from these plastic pieces. So I'm going to replace those. You don't have to, that's just what I want to do. little denatured alcohol, clean the stem. I'm putting the washer on now at the end of the stem. You want the side that has lettering on it down. Put the new stem packing seal in. Put our valve back together now. Stem packing seal in, new washer. When you put the valve stem in, it will push up the stem packing seal. So hold that down with your fingers. I'm going to use a flat punch to push that seal down. Now my new packing nut goes on. I'm using two adjustable wrenches to tighten that packing nut. Now what I'm going to do is apply some OD silicone grease onto the stem here, the threads, so that it opens and closes smoothly and it stops hard water from building up. You can use your finger or a matchstick. Now it's time to put the valves in. Remember, the valves need to be in the fully open position. So as you guys can see, it's easy to rebuild the valve. You can purchase a new one, but your valve is just fine. It just needs new seals. To make it work right. Now I'm going to put the valve body in for the cold water. I've put some Rectro Seal 5 around its sealant because I have that deformed manifold. The 
socket wrench goes on. Now I'm going to tighten the valve body. Now I'm going to put the valve body in the hot water side. I didn't put any sealant around it because I don't have a problem with the manifold being deformed. Now the valves are in. If the packing nuts leak, so you turn the shower on, you have a leak here, that means you have to tighten the packing nut. Two wrenches. There you go. You put your escutcheon back on. Then you put your handle on, put the screw in, it's time to turn on the main water supply to your home. Now you have to be careful with that. When you turn the main water supply on, two things. One is you turn it on slowly, not full force, a little bit at a time, and have every faucet in your home and on the outside of your home, the hose bibs open so that it can push out air that's in your system from not having water in it. You don't want the full force of that water hitting your pipes and you want to make sure you relieve all of the air from the system. After all the air is cleared from your water pipes, close your faucets and turn off your hose bibs. Don't forget to turn your water heater on, move it from the pilot position to your desired temperature. And that's how you fix a leaking valve in a shower or bathtub. Hope it helps and happy DIYing.